Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to continue the series on the Trompovsky attack with the classical defense, which is pawn to e6 on move 2 for black. So if you haven't seen the introductory video to the Trompovsky, please do. Uh, there's a link to the whole series at the beginning of the description below. So, uh, with the Trompovsky, white is, by playing bishop g5, the simplest threat and the simplest way to explain the Trompovsky is white wants to take on f6, firstly doubling black's pawns, secondly gaining control over the e4 square, and, and that's as simple as it gets. Trompovsky is not a complicated opening, or the idea behind the opening is not complicated. However, the positions arising because of this idea are extremely sharp and extremely complicated. And yesterday we looked at knight e4, which is the main move. Today we are going to look at pawn to e6, which is the second option for black to avoid this annoying capture. The other moves we are going to be analyzing are d5, c5, and, and other options, which allow white to take on f6 and do what he wants to do. Now, of course, after knight e4, it's impossible to take the knight. And after e6, the classical defense, if you take the knight now, then queen takes knight and white has given up his bishop pair for not much. Okay, and here are some downsides of what black is doing. Well, firstly, uh, he's obviously giving white the option to play e4 for free. And and that's a dream of any d4 player and in, in every d4 opening if you can play e4 so early on without any consequences that that has then that has to be quite good for white but there are well there are some problems with this and it's not as clear one thing i should say is that when white manages to expand with e4 e5 which if he chooses to do so he can often do it without any trouble. The positions are going to resemble the French defense a lot. And the pawn structure is going to look like this. So these are going to be white pawns, and these are going to be black pawns. And if you haven't seen my series on the French defense, you should at least the introductory video to familiarize yourself with these pawn structures. The alternative to playing e4 are three options which white has at his disposal, which we are going to look at. Uh, that's either e3, knight to d2 or knight to f3. Now I should say that knight f3 immediately transposes to the Tore attack that's going to be covered in a separate series and almost all positions in which white plays the early knight f3 without e4 is just going to be the Tore and, and that's going to be discussed separately. The other two options are not as aggressive as e4 and when white plays either e3 or knight to d2 for example black has one simple plan and that's to break open the position with c5 eventually so for example h6 bishop h4 and c5 white defends and this trade is going to happen and the pawn structures are going to be very similar to the sicilian defense and black will most often play positions very similar to the hedgehog with, with b6 and d6 with these bishops on b7 and and e7 so in essence to to play the Trompovsky, or to play the classical defense against the Trompovsky, you have to be familiar with three different openings except the Trompovsky. You have to know the French, the Sicilian, and the Torre attack. Not that you have to know everything about them, but you have to be familiar with the pawn structures. You have to know the Scheveningen small center in the Sicilian. You have to know the hedgehog structure for black. And you have to know the advanced variation of the French. Because as we are going to see, most often when we get into the French structures, this knight is still going to be on b1. So it's not going to lead to winner or classical type positions or Tarash type positions. White will have to, white will still have the option to choose. Okay, uh, let's let's start. Uh, before we get into the sidelines, knight d2 and pawn to e3, I would just like to show you the main move for a second, we will cover the main move in detail uh, in a bit. So with this move pawn to e4, black has to do something about his knight. Now there are alternatives to pawn to h6, which is the main move. As we are going to see, black can play c5, black can play bishop e7 and pinning, black can also play d5 or d6, and that does solve the issue of the knight as we are going to see. But and all the alternatives to the main move h6 I'm going to cover. 
But I would just like to reach the main position uh, in which after h6, bishop takes knight and queen takes knight is played. And white now has a very pleasant choice between knight c3, knight f3 and pawn to c3. As we said, knight f3 is going to resemble the Tore a lot. Uh, knight c3 is the main move and c3 is, in my opinion, the best move. And what you can see at the start of this opening is that fine black has developed one piece but that's not a useful piece to develop uh, white on the other hand has a huge center this is this is just incredible central control for white and the main thing is this center can be supported so what i wanted to say about the move e6 for black instead of creating uh, insanely complicated positions like most other defenses against the trompovsky this is going to lead to uh, complicated play for black, uncomfortable play for black, and textbook classical chess positions for white if he wishes to enter them. So this, I don't think it gets any simpler than this for white. You play knight f3, knight c3, bishop d3, or bishop e2, you castle kingside, you play f4, and just continue attacking. Whereas black doesn't have such simple development. Okay, let's cover knight d2 and, and pawn to e3 as moves on move 3 first. Uh, as I said, knight f3 will transpose to the Tore. Okay, let's go over knight to d2 first. So after d4, knight f6, the Trompovsky e6, white plays knight to d2. And this is a simple move, a simple developing move, supporting e4, supporting c4. Uh, preventing knight e4 at any stage if bishop e7 is played. And, yeah, developing sensibly. Now, black has a couple of options. He can play d5, he can play c5, he can play pawn to h6. As I said, the main idea, since white hasn't expanded with e4, is to prevent that expansion. If white doesn't play e4 immediately, then black has the time to break the center before it was created. Okay, so I think c5 is a very principled move. Uh, d5 is also quite okay. It's going to lead to again, Tore-like positions after knight f3. And h6 is the main line. So let's have a look at c5 and, and h6. After c5, white supports the center. Taking is really no good, uh, trading this uh, and allowing the bishop to develop with tempo. Now, black isn't forced to take. Black can play b6 and play a sort of reversed English uh, or, yeah, a reversed English. Also, knight c6 can be played, playing a sort of Sicilian uh, without without the exchange in the center. But cd4 is by far the most popular, trading a flank pawn for a center pawn. And now black does not play positions with d5. That would lead, I'll just show you one thing briefly that doesn't happen. This would lead to a favorable um, Carlsbad structure for white, actually, because this minority attack is never going to happen. This pin is already annoying. And, of course, same as in the exchange Karo Khan, uh, which this is very similar to, uh, there's going to be a huge battle over the control of the e5 square, whether black can push the e5 square, and whether black can do something with his minority attack. In my opinion, that's not happening here, and white should just be much better. So black should not go into Karo Khan structures in this position. Instead, black should play with b6 and bishop e7, and b6 and bishop b7, sort of a hedgehog type structure, Sicilian. So bishop e7, knight f3, b6, bishop d3, bishop b7, white castles, and black castles. And in this position, after, for example, rook e1, d6, <coughs> Black has a lot of chances here, and it's, I would say, a pleasant position for black. There's always the opportunity for, for the pieces to come alive. That being said, there's a pawn on d4, which in the Sicilian you don't get, and you don't get that against the Hedgehog. So you may be confused. I would be confused. I don't play the Hedgehog, and I, I wouldn't play this with black. I would play the main line. But it's definitely something that could put white on the back foot, and it's not common, it's not that common. Okay, and after knight to d2, h6 is the main move, and it will lead to very similar positions after bishop h4 and c5, and again, e3, c takes d, e takes d, bishop e7, and again, 
knight f3, b6, bishop b3, bishop b7, you can see that this is the same thing, castles, castles, rook e1, d6, c3, and this has been played by many very strong players, and Swidler, for example, uh, has a game from 2019, that's the highest rated game, he drew Evgeny Barev, uh, and it was also played in the 80s by Lev Pologevsky and, and, and other people. So against knight d2, black has nothing better but to go for this. Now, these positions tend to end in a draw. There are still 50 or so games from this position. The main move is knight b to d7. Then white plays a4, expands on the, on the queen side, pawn to a6, knight to c4. And yeah, the game's going from here. Most games end in a draw. Uh, there's a game in which Carlsen defeated Ivanchuk uh, with the black pieces, so you can have a look at that. But definitely, if you come to this position, knight d2 is a rarely played move compared to, to e4, which e4 tries to punish black for playing e6, so e4 makes the most sense. Okay, let's have a look at the second option. After d4, knight f6, bishop g5, e6. This is the most passive, uh, and white just plays pawn to e3. And... Again, this is going to be very similar to the Tore attack. Again, black should break the center straight away. If knight f3 is played, that this transposes to the Tore attack. If you delay knight f3, then you're not in the Tore yet. So, for example, c3 is, is the main move. cd4, ed4. Now, again, if d5, we have a Carlsbad, but black doesn't play d5. Black plays b6, bishop b7, d6, bishop e7, and plays for place for a sort of hedgehog structure. So for example, bishop e7, knight to f3, b6, bishop to d3, bishop to b7, knight b to d2, and d6. And you should already be very familiar with this structure and this move order, and this is the pawn structure you will get as black and as white if white decides not to play e4. And if you play the Trompovsky and you don't want to play the main lines against e6, this is where you should start studying. If you play black and you want to play e6, this is the pawn structure you have to master. And this should be your starting point. Okay, now let's uh, get to the main lines. Okay, so after d4, knight f6, bishop g5, e6, the main move, the move that makes most sense, is pawn to e4. Now, with pawn to e4, white is threatening to take the knight. Uh, and there are always some tricks to save this position, similar to the Botvinnik Semislav. But black basically has to react precisely already. Uh, okay, so, um, if a random move is played, like d6 or d5, which are theoretical moves, white is not threatening to win the knight with e5 because black has h6, as I said, Botvinnik Semislav type structure. The main move is h6, and after h6, the position is going to branch out on move 5, the, what we had a look at, and white can choose between three moves. Instead of h6, black has four possible alternatives, which white simply has to know, uh, even though h6, let me give you the exact number, h6 has been played two and a half thousand times. The other four moves combined have been played about four or five hundred times. So h6 is by far the most popular. That doesn't mean that you don't have to know the other moves. So let's have a look at the other moves first. Starting with the least common, pawn to d6. Uh, this is not a good move. Uh, I mean, it's it's not losing or anything, but it just gives white an extremely pleasant position in which he doesn't have to know any theory. And there are those openings in which you can just play very natural moves, and those are the best moves, and you don't want to allow that. Excuse me. So white plays knight to c3, black plays bishop e7, white plays knight to f3, black castles, white plays bishop d3, and this... This is there anything better than this? This is the perfect setup, and that is why I would recommend the move d6. White has more space, white has incredibly good knights, all the pieces are optimal, and the engine says white is almost plus one. 
Not that that means much, but this is just easier to play. This is not a Pirz or a Modern where your bishop is on g7 and you're preparing for e5. You don't have counterplay here. You can play c5 eventually, but yeah. Okay, uh, the other move that makes a bit more sense is d5. And after d5, you basically have to advance with e5. And now we come to French positions I was talking about. So black has to play h6 here, chase the bishop away. You don't really want to take here. Uh, so bishop to e3, want to save this bishop. Because this knight is really no good, it cannot come to e4. Uh, so it goes to d7. And if you ever played against the French, then you will know this structure. And in this position, this knight is still on b1. That's very important. White hasn't developed the knight yet, therefore white has more time to do something else. So this is most similar to the advanced French. And white can start with f4 straight away. And white is going to be the first to castle, uh, because black castling here is going to run into an immediate f5. White is going to have a very natural attack. If c5 is played, the knight is not on c3, so, so c3, French defense pawn structure. And the development is just, just perfect. Bishop d3, knight f3, f5, castles, king side, f6, checkmate. So again, d5 doesn't lose by force. But if you've ever beaten the French defense, then you're going to be very happy to, to see this move on the board. That being said, most Rampovsky uh, players don't play e4. So, okay, two more moves. Bishop e7, again, allows e5. This is going to be a slightly different story. This is going to be uh, very similar to the Aliakin defense or the Alekin defense, where the knight is chased around the board. Uh, knight d5, you take. Now, if knight takes, which is possible, uh, then bishop d3 and d5 and again we now we have a slightly improved french for for black because he's controlling f5 with his knight and the knight is definitely better on e7 than on d7 but nevertheless you don't have to push for f5 you don't have to play f4 you can just continue knight f3 c5 c3 again this knight hasn't committed yet white definitely has more space black definitely still has the french bishop if b6 bishop a6 fine he will be wasting time so that's what happens if he takes with the knight if he takes with the queen then of course c4 and okay actually actually queen b4 could be good but eventually c4 you can you can do something first you can play knight d2 first but this knight is going to be chased away to b6 eventually after c4 queen b4 excuse me for not preparing this but i believe I believe just queen d2. I didn't want to trace pieces, but I think this has to be fine. And the knight either goes to b6 or to e7. Probably to e7. And again, white has a lot more space. So basically after bishop e7, e5, knight d5, bishop takes. Black has a choice between two awkward moves. So bishop e7, definitely a bad move. And the main move, uh, if you want to avoid h6, is c5, which is okay better than the other moves but still okay now here white can choose between two sensible moves d5 and e5 e5 is not a good move it may seem nice but it leads to a semi-forced or forced line in which black is simply equal or, or better um, it starts with e5 and white, black doesn't move the knight, of course, losing the queen, but h6. And now bishop c1. The thing with, with c5, as we saw in yesterday's video on knight e4, it gives the queen the option to, to run to b6. So bishop c1 is often a useful move. Now knight d5, c4, knight b6, we saw this already. And d takes c5, there's, there's nothing better. And after bishop c5, uh, queen g4 is the idea behind e5 because this pawn has dislodged the defender of the king the king hasn't castled yet if it does then of course bishop h6 wins on the spot so king f8 is played and this is known and this is considered better for for black in fact after knight c3 which is white's most popular move black won three games this hasn't been played on super grandmaster level but on grandmaster and on international master level 
Black, Black was winning games. But e even so, it doesn't matter what level of play we're talking about, the engine says equal uh, or slightly better for Black. Okay, uh, but the sensible move is d5, not allowing any of those uh, tricks. Pawn to d6, uh, knight to c3, uh, and now this is much easier to play for, for white. The engine will say it's almost equal eventually, but as you're going to see, white's position is just simple to play. Bishop b5 check, bishop to d7, you take on e6, of course the bishop is pinned, so f takes e6, and this is already... A concession and the weakness and after e5 there's trouble in this position you don't want to leave this pawn here by playing d5 because pawn takes knight so you have to take and after bishop takes and bishop takes and queen h5 check and g6 and queen g4 you're threatening queen e6 and again the engine says this is equal but i'd be very scared to uh, to play black here Okay, and finally, we are going to have a look at pawn to h6, which is the main move. And after pawn to h6, we are going to be looking at the position which is forced after bishop f6, queen takes f6, where white can choose between three options, knight f3, knight c3, and pawn to c3. Uh, let's start with knight to c3, which is the most popular move. So again, we have d4. Knight of six, bishop g5, e6, e4, h6, bishop takes, queen takes. And three choices, knight c3, knight of three, and c3. Knight c3 makes a lot of sense, defends the center, develops the knight, gives black the option to play a win over type move with bishop to b4. We're going to have a look at that. And leads to very interesting positions in which I when I first started studying them, I couldn't believe that black would ever want to go in for this. And I remember uh, when Milan and I were preparing against the Trompovsky, uh, after a while we said, well, maybe we should just play e6. At the time I knew nothing about e6 because we were only preparing this for, for the black side. And... I thought, well, how bad can it be? When I saw this position, I decided, no, I'm, I'm not in e6. So, bear that in mind. So, black has two options here. Either bishop to b4 or d6. Uh, d6 is, of course, safer. Because it prevents any tricks uh, with, with e5, any further expansion. And, well, solidifies black's center. Bishop b4 is, of course, more active because it gets the bishop outside of the pawn chain. So let's have a look at that first. Now, why should not panic? Of course, it's possible to play several different moves. Knight e2 is possible with the idea of g3, bishop g2. Uh, knight f3 is possible. It's not that black really wants to take here. It's possible to play queen d3 with the idea of queenside castling. It's also possible to play queen d2, simply defending uh, your knight. And this is considered to be the main move. Now, whatever white does, uh, the, the position is quite similar except for for 92 excuse me 92 g3 bishop g2 but i would recommend the move queen d2 and now d6 and now a3 and the idea is basically with a3 to either chase this bishop away or to force it to take black should never take especially because the queen is defending so bishop a5 and now knight f3 normal knight d7 black develops bishop d3 normal black castles and white again has absolutely no issues in this position uh, and after bishop to b4 uh, queen to d2 d6 a3 bishop a5 it's also possible to play the move f4 and f4 is well the more aggressive way to play and I think if you're playing for a win, that's how you should be playing. In this position, it's considered to be best for black to take the knight, although I cannot really understand why. I'm guessing black doesn't have enough time to to save his bishop after a5 and to withstand the pressure after e5. So bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and now black plays the move e5. So black has to fight this tide of pawns coming in. And if, of course, if black plays imprecisely with, for example, castles, then I, I think white should just be better. 
So that's another way to play against bishop to b4. So I think against bishop b4, queen d2, d6, a3, bishop a5, and f4 should be the setup uh, white should go for if, if white wants to play for the win. Okay, and bishop to b4 is, as I said, risky because of that. Uh, it's much better to play the move d6 because it doesn't risk that much. Now, white doesn't really care. White does the same thing and, well, plays queen to d2. And in this position, the idea is to castle queenside quickly and again go for a quick attack, often involving, often involving f4, as we saw in the previous variation. Black has a couple of option, options. The most popular is g5, blunting the queen, preparing to fianchetto the bishop and uh, to castle. Uh, alternatively, c6 can be played. Uh, strengthening the center a bit and now f4 and e5 and d takes e5 d takes e5 f5 bishop b4 and in this position if black can get his king to safety he should be okay i would be terrified i mean i would never play this with black this just seems that I, I don't want to play this i mean white is going to castle queenside and play g4 h4 g5 and black resigns I don't know where the black king goes. If you turn on the engine though, it only says plus 0.4 for white, but the engine doesn't understand. I don't think the engine understands how tricky this is for black. Alternatively, knight d7 can be played, uh, and now f4 is the correct continuation, and now a6 is what people play, preventing bishop, or uh, preventing knight b5, excuse me. That I just, again, don't want to play this. So the main move, g5, makes a ton of sense. That prevents f4, prevents a further expansion, and we know what white wants to do. White wants to castle queenside and, and destroy black, so at least we can prevent some of the attack. Okay, so white castles queenside anyway. Bishop to g7, uh, normal. Now there are two options. Uh, you can play g3. g3 is, I think, the more popular way to play. And it's fine. Uh, it's more positional. I would recommend the move e5. And the move e5 is why I basically said to myself I'm never playing e6 with black. If this is unavoidable. If, if black wants to play the best moves, h6 is the best move. And if you get this position, I, I, I am not sure who could be able to play black without blundering something. So e5 is a move that completely de destroys the black position. So you have to take this once, and if you take it twice, you get mated. So that's that's clear. So you don't take it twice. Instead, you retreat the queen to e7. And now, of course, bishop takes, pawn is threatened, so you play f4. If pawn takes, then the, the king is just cut off on both sides, not castling king side ever and, and not getting to safety ever. So black should just ignore that and play knight c6. And now there are a couple of options. You can again play g3 and bishop g2, taking control over the queen side as well. I like knight e4 and sacrifices on f6, sacrifices on d6. I mean, look at this position. I just, I wish I, I had this position on the board. So if I know that somebody plays e6, against the Trompovsky, if I'm preparing and I see that in this position they play e6, I, I'll, I'll play the Trompovsky against them. So I, I just hoping to get this position on the board. So knight c3 is the most popular move for a reason. And after d6, queen d2 and castles queen side, and just push and just, I, I enjoy this position very much. Now let's move on to the second option after e4 h6 bishop f6 queen f6 let's have a look at pawn to c3 pawn to c3 is also very interesting here black is going to have two options either d6 or d5 well those are the most popular options he can also play b6 or c5 or e5 or g6 or knight c6 but those are very seldom played moves uh, d5 is the sideline and now e5 is possible uh, it's also possible to play bishop d3 simply supporting the pawn. I think knight to d2 is the principled way to play. But then again, I play the Tarash against the French, so I like my knight on d2 in these structures and I know how to play with it. 
if you don't play the Tarash French, maybe e5 for you who play the advance against the French. In any case, knight d2 is a very sensible move and the most popular move. c5, okay, knight to f3, and this is sort of similar to the open Tarash against the French. Okay, c takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop to c5, attacks the knight, and now knight to b3 is the main move. And this position, still, black still has to sort out the bishop and play for e5. I quite like it uh, for, for white. I'm used to playing with my knights controlling d4 and I'm familiar with this position. But then again, if you're not comfortable with this, e5 is also a move. Queen d8, knight f3, and again, French defense, c5. And in this position, you can keep the tension, but it's most popular to take this pawn, and after bishop takes c5, to play bishop to d3. Uh, maybe it's to give, since there's no knight on d7 yet, or anything, or on c6, maybe it's to give this knight the option to go to d4. After knight c6, that's impossible. But I, I don't understand why people just take on c5. If I was playing this position without knowing theory, I would never take on, on, on c5. I would play bishop d3 or, or bishop to e2. So that's that's possible. It's also possible after d5 to play bishop d3 and after c5 to continue knight f3. So d5, you will get a French defense type structure in any case. d6, however, is the more popular choice, not committing in the center, excuse me, and not allowing d5, e5. Now against this, uh, white has a couple of very minor sidelines and the main move bishop d3. And the idea behind d6 is to, to support e5 so that black would take a claim in the center as well. The problem with not playing uh, e5 straight away is that in some cases white will have enough time to play f4 and try to put the brakes on, on black suspension or black equalizing with space in the center. So the alternatives are g6, knight d7, and queen g5. Queen g5 is, I mean, it's a threat, but after g3 it's not a threat. And now e5. So does the insertion of these two moves make a lot of difference? I, I don't know. I'm not sure it does because g3 supports f4 and h4, so I, I would never play queen g5. Uh, knight d7, not a very active move, and now after g6, excuse me, oh, uh, knight to e2, and after g6, white can just castle and again play for f4. Even if f5 is played, if e5 is played here, f4 can still be played, and I just think this is pleasant for white. If you play g6 straight away, then again knight e2, bishop to g7, both sides castle, and again white plays f4. So this prevents an easy e5. Eventually black gets to play it, but it's easier to counter it with the pawn on, on f4 already. So against bishop d3, which is the main move, uh, so let's... I'm sorry if I'm going too fast, I'll just get back to this. So we have this position and the move c3 on move 5. This is the second most popular move. And black plays d6 and bishop to d3. And we said that black wants to play e5, so e5 is the main line for a reason. And this just prevents any expansion uh, from, from white, makes it harder to play f4, which white can play anyway, but at least black took a stand in the center. Knight e2, g6, the plans don't really change, it's just that black has already put a pawn on e5. White castles, bishop to g7, and f4. And now, well, this is why I like c3. I would still play five knight c3 if I was playing white, but this is this is very nice because it's easy to go wrong with black, and you have to be extra careful. Fe is sometimes a threat, de is sometimes a threat, d uh, d and f5 is sometimes a threat. Queen b3 could be annoying, queen a4 could be annoying, bishop b5 could be annoying, bishop c4 could be annoying, rook f3 to somewhere could be annoying, knight d2 to knight c4 could be annoying. There are just knight a3, knight b5, not to mention that. I mean, there are a ton of threats in this position and a ton of plans in this position, while black pieces are still mostly on the back row and the king in the center. 
So black has to be precise. Queen e7 is the precise move, defending e5. And if you don't know it, then that's hard to find. White's move, knight d2, is probably the only move most people would think of. Okay, and black castles. The knight transfers back to... The knight transfers to f3, very nice maneuver. The knight is much better here. Uh, knight d... Whoa. Whoa. Knight d7, black develops. Queen d2, white develops. And now c5, black has to fight for the center. And this position, I think, is very pleasant. Uh, there's a game played between Dimitrov and Fier in 2019, which white won, which I'd suggest you look at. So that's c3. Again, very pleasant position. Because this bishop heads to g7, it's very good to have this pawn chain. Okay, now, uh, knight to f3, uh, we are just going to have a look at briefly. So d4, knight f6, bishop g5, e6, e4, h6, bishop takes, queen takes, knight f3, and we are in the Tore attack. Okay, this I wouldn't recommend for white because you're not playing the Tore, you play the Trumpovsky. If you would like to play this, however, the Tore uh, video is coming out in about two weeks, I would say, or maybe less. So I'm going to be covering that there. Let me just show you how we get this position via the Tore move order, which is far more common. Knight f3, e6, and now bishop g5. This is the Tore attack. And after h6, bishop takes, queen takes, pawn to e4, Tore attack. This is the Nimtsovich variation of the Tore attack, and black plays pawn to d6, white plays knight c3, uh, black plays knight to d7, and I'm not sure what happens, I think white just plays queen d2 and castles queen side, oh yeah, okay, so knight f3 on move 5 will transpose to the Tore, so let's just sum this all up, if white plays pawn to e6, if black plays pawn to e6, then white has a pleasant choice, uh, after e4, and I, would, I wouldn't recommend the sidelines with knight d2 or e3, I think e4 is the most sensible. Black has alternatives to pawn to h6, but they are all much worse than pawn to h6, so after h6, bishop f6, queen f6, you can choose between knight c3 and c3, if you play knight f3 or going into the Tore, and both of these moves lead to very interesting positions, which are much easier to play for white. So, to conclude, if you are a knight f6, e6 player, don't play e6 against the Trumpovsky. They're better and easier to play moves. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you got something from this video. Let me know what you think uh, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.